What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to talk about Philly Phantom, Tommy Lachlan. Now, I discussed Tommy Lachlan in a previous video when I talked about great Philadelphia fighters, but I didn't go in depth in Tommy Lachlan's career. Let's talk about a fight that took place Friday, June 1st, 1928. 25-year-old Philly Phantom, Tommy Lachlan would defend his light heavyweight championship crown against the former New York Sack World Welterweight Champion, 25-year-old Pete Latcho, defeated him in 15 rounds in Brooklyn, New York's Ebbets Field. Now, the referee was Jed Gahan, and he would give the nod to the Philly Phantom, Tommy Lachlan. Tommy Lachlan stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches. He was a light heavyweight with a 73 inch reach. He had a record of 82 wins, 14 losses, 8 draws, and 12 knockouts at the point of this fight. His opponent was Pete Lazzo. He stood 5 foot 7 and a half inches. He was a middleweight who had a 68 inch reach. He had a record of 88 wins, 22 losses, 4 draws, and 25 knockouts at the point of this fight. Now, Pete Lazzo was a former world welterweight champion. He would defeat Mickey Walker, Toy Bulldog. But Mickey Walker would get his title back. And Walker would eventually relinquish his crown and move up to the middleweight championship division. And when he did that, it caused some problems because there were three black fighters in the top five that he chose not to give his title a chance to be challenged with because he had in his contract that he would not fight a black fighter. So this caused all kinds of problems because one of the fighters was from England. His name was Len Johnson. Len Johnson could not possibly fight for a title shot because of the rule over in England, 24. You couldn't have one ounce of black blood in your body to legally fight and I emphasize the word legally because that's what it was in England. Wasn't that way in the United States? In the United States, it was just something that white establishment prevented black fighters from getting title shots. But it was legal in England. And Lynn Johnson was not able to get a shot at a world title. So the other two fighters was William Gorilla Jones and Harry Smith, the Harlem Thunderbolt. Well, Harry Smith was sick and he would eventually pass away in 1933. But then you had William Landon Gorilla Jones. He would step into the tournament and he would wind up defeating Odone Piazza and becoming the second black middleweight champion in boxing history. Well, Pete Lazzo would also move up as high as light heavyweight. He would challenge Tommy Lachlan for his title. And the Associated Press scored five rounds for Tommy Lachlan, four rounds for Pete Lazzo, and one round even. Now, who was Pete Lazzo? His name was Young Clancy. He was born August 1st, 1902 in Pennsylvania. He died July 7th, 1968. He was 65 years of age at the time of his death and he would reside in Atlantic City. Now he had a record of 146 total bouts, 93 wins, 25 knockouts, 39 losses, and 12 draws. He had two no contests and he'd be in a ring with Mickey Walker, May 20th, 1926, and June 3rd, 1927. Now Tommy Lachlan, his name was Thomas Patrick Lachlan. He was born November 29th, 1902 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He died July 7th, 1982 in Pennsylvania as well. He stood 5 foot 11 and a half inches, weighed 140 to 202 pounds. He was managed by Joe Smith. He ended up with a record of 95 explosive bouts. But he had 17 knockouts. Reminding me of Maxi Rosenblum. He could jab, he could move. He could sting you enough to keep you at bay, but he couldn't punch hard enough to break an egg, so therefore he did not have a lot of knockouts. But he was in a ring with fighters such as Mike Mateague, who he won the title from. And he would become the light heavyweight champion of the world. He'd also been in a ring with Brian Downey, 
Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson would be the world middleweight champion 1920 when he would defeat Michael Dowd. He would lose his crown in 1923 to the Pittsburgh windmill, Harry Greb. But Tommy Locker would also be in the ring with Jeff Smith, who was known as the Harlem well, the Bayon Globetrotter. And he was some fighter. He had his wars with Harry Greb. But I have Jeff Smith in my top 10 greatest middleweights of all times. Jeff Smith, the Bayon Globetrotter. Jimmy Slattery, Harry Greb, Pittsburgh Windmill. Now, Jimmy Slattery was from Buffalo, New York. And he could fight. And one of his biggest fights was with Dave Shade out of California. Oh, what a fight that was. Tommy Lockham would also be in the ring with Leo Lomsky and Roland Todd. Al Latour out of Philadelphia. Al Latour was a heavyweight. He would want to be getting knocked out with a beautiful right hand left hook combination of the brown bomber Joe Lewis. Gerald Duffy Griffin and Arturo Godoy. He was in the ring with Paulino Uscadon from Spain and Yale Orcas. Steve Hamus out of Pennsylvania. Jack Lewent and Jimmy Braddock, Cinderella Man. Jimmy Braddock would become the world heavyweight champion when he would defeat Max Baer at the Madison Square Garden Bowl. And Jimmy Braddock would be knocked out in eight rounds by the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis. And that would make Joe Lewis the second black heavyweight champion of the world. And Tommy Lockham would also be in the ring with Mickey Walker, Toy Bulldog. Jimmy Slattery, Mickey Walker, those two fighters were something else. George Compartier, the Orchid Man. He himself was a light heavyweight champion. And he would lose his title to Battle and Seeky. Tommy Lockham would also be in the ring with Young Stribling, Armand Emanuel, and Kingfish Levinsky. He'd also defeat Johnny Risco. And Martin Berkey, King Solomon, Jack Delaney, Max Baer, and Jack Sharkey. They would fight once again. He fought from 1919 to 1937. He would defeat Mike Matique and win the World Light Heavyweight Championship crown. October 7th, 1927. June 1st, 1928. He would defeat Pete Latso. Defeat him in 15 rounds. July 16th, 1928. He would defeat Pete Latso once again. Pete Latzo, excuse me, in 15 rounds. Now, September 1929, he will relinquish the World Light Heavyweight Championship crown. Why? Because he wanted to move up to the heavyweight division. Gene Turney would have his last heavyweight championship title fight in 1928 when he would defeat Tom Heaney and New Zealand. But Tom Heaney was from New Zealand. And Gene Turney would relinquish his title. And many men would be scrambling to try and get in line for that title. So they would develop a tournament. And Tommy Lockwood and Jack Sharkey would face one another. New York Yankee Stadium. And Lockwood would be finished in three rounds. He was too small of a man to challenge Jack Sharkey. But the only time that Tommy Lockwood would fight for a title shot. It would be against Pimo Carnero. He'd be close to 70 pounds underweight. And he would lose that title opportunity. Now, Tommy Lockwood would be credited for being a fighter. The fight fighters that were in every weight division from welterweight to heavyweight. And he would join good company with fighters such as Philadelphia Jack O'Brien, Byron Levinsky, Harold Johnson, as Philadelphia's light heavyweight champions. Matthew Saad Muhammad would also be added to that list. So you're looking at Tommy Lachlan, who is to your right, and Pete Latso to your left. July 16th, 1928. We'll go 10 rounds. And Tommy Lachlan would be victorious. What a fighter Tommy Lachlan was. And Pete Lasso wasn't too bad himself. 
Let's take a look at a scrapbook. With Pete Latso. When he squares up with Mickey Walker. Troy Bulldog. The welterweight championship crown. All right, now I had to take out this Mickey Walker scrapbook just to show you Mickey Walker and Pete Latso. I had to remove about 85 books just to get to this book. So I, I was going to show you some more things, but that was a hassle for me. So let's just take a look at this one here. It's Pete Latso and Mickey Walker, world title bout. And Pete Latso would defeat Mickey Walker, and Mickey Walker would run it back with him and get his title back. But here you have Mickey Walker, Pete Latso. Pete Latso was to your left, and Mickey Walker's to your right. Toy Bulldog. All right, family, Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Gift Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Tommy Lochran and Pete Latso. Mix it up. In defense of Tommy Lochran's light heavyweight championship crown. And here you have Tommy Lachlan facing various fighters. Tommy Lachlan's to your left, Mickey Walker's to your right. I'm sorry, Mickey Walker is to your left and Tommy Lachlan was to your right. Now you can't make out these pictures too well. But Tommy Lachlan right now is to your right. He has his back to you. And Mickey Walker was facing him. This is Jimmy Braddock to your left. Tommy Rockin to your right. You notice Tommy Lachlan has a master jab. Once again, Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Thanks for watching. Tommy Lachman and Pete Latso, right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Series. Peace.